Jordan Henderson said yes to Saudi Arabia. Kylian Mbappe has said no to them. Uh, refuses to enter into talks with Al Hilal. Uh, just an update overnight. Alex, uh, someone close to PSG was saying, so what now? Basically, it's a waiting game until their first game, PSG's first game uh, in Ligue 1 on the 13th of August. And um, <laughs> if I can paraphrase it, it said it might well end up being quite brutal, the atmosphere, because at the moment, many PSG, the hardcore fans, uh, have come to the decision that Mbappe's going to get what he wants and he's going to leave for free completely. He's going to head to Real Madrid. So much so that many of the squad at PSG want him out. The, the other ones would be happy to see him sit on the bench. Well, that's fascinating because I was told earlier this week that there are some amongst the playing staff at PSG who are allies of Mbappe, one of them actually being Marco Verratti, who himself is in negotiations about a move to Saudi Arabia. looks like that could well happen. And one of the reasons that he's so keen to leave Paris is that he feels Mbappe is being treated badly by the football club. So it sounds, not for the first time, like PSG is going to be a, a very divided place in the dressing room amongst the fans as well, because there will be supporters, I'm sure, who are on Mbappe's side. This is not an ideal scenario for anybody. Uh, we don't want to say we told you so, but we were pretty clear from the start that Mbappe wouldn't be interested in this move to Saudi Arabia. So it ha has transpired. What happens now? My prediction is that we get towards the end of the transfer window. Real Madrid come in with an offer well below Mbappe's true valuation. And PSG, knowing that he's going to join Real Madrid for free anyway next summer, I think we'll be obliged to take it. Yeah. And he gets his way. Yep. He gets his way. That's the upshot of it. Uh, as I said, plenty going on back here. West Ham, you're going to hear from Jared Bowen later on this morning. Uh, the boys who won the, the Europa Conference League are pretty much set to start the season for West Ham because no new faces as yet. That's in spite of the fact that West Ham have got 100 million quid uh, plus for Declan Rice. On the subject of Declan Rice, uh, now with Arsenal, of course, he's been talking. He's been answering questions like, Arsenal's targets, what would they be this season? I think to win, you know, to win. Um, that's the most important thing now, to win trophies. I think that's why, you know, Mikel's here. You know, that's why the players that we've got are here. You know, everyone wants to push in that direction. You know, like I said, you only get one career and at the end, you know, you want to be determined on how many trophies you've won. And I know this squad here are so hungry to win stuff. You know, we, we're young, we're hungry, we've got a lot of energy. Um, and I feel like after the back of last season, we'd have learnt a lot. So this year, you know, with all the competitions we're going into, there's one aim and that's to win, not just to, to take part. That was Declan uh, speaking about life at Arsenal just in the days that he's been there, Alex. Should we still view, now that they've got Rice, should we still view Arsenal, Alex, as Manchester City's biggest challengers? I think we have to. Um, because I think they'll have learned lessons from last season. I'm still of the belief they should have won the title last year. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that Arsenal bottled it, but I think they had big games towards the back end of the season. I'm thinking Southampton at home. There's no excuse for dropping points at home to Southampton when you're trying to win a title. Um, that, that's just one of the examples. West Ham away as well, which in fairness, we gave Martin Keown a bit of stick at the time for saying that would be a tough game. <laughs> Uh, and so it proves. We love doing that. Uh, but they're going to be a year older. I can see people like Saka, uh, Martinelli only getting better. They're going to have Saliba back. He was a big loss towards the end of last season. And they have deep in the squad. If you look at the players that have left Manchester City, and of course there's still plenty of time for them to replace them, uh, I think Arsenal have to be seen as serious contenders. I think as we sit here now, and again, there's still plenty of time to go in the transfer window, I think they will be the main challenges for City. So how do you see it? I mean, uh, somebody was asking me the other night, the Premier League, is it more open or is it more closed than ever before in terms of the title race? Well, I think it looks more open just because of what's been happening at Manchester City. I think Ilkay Gundogan is going to be a, a massive loss for them. It looks like the plan maybe is to give Calvin Phillips more game time. I'm not sure that that is a like-for-like -like replacement. Kovacic as well, for me, doesn't quite have the same qualities as Gunduan. What will happen with Carl Walker? He obviously captained the team against Bayern Munich. They're trying to keep him. 
Mares is out the door. There's interest in Bernardo Silva. And apart from Kovacic, no real incomings at the moment. Nathan Ake picked up an injury in their latest pre-season friendly that they can't really afford to lose him. So at the moment, the City squad looks a bit light. Arsenal have strengthened. They've got options now on their bench. So I think it will be closer. Liverpool are having this rebuild. Maybe we'll talk about Romeo Lavia and the latest there in a minute. Manchester United are getting the players in. The Eric Ten Hag wants. So I can see this as a potential four-way title fight. I, I think I saw a, a sequence in social media of how impressed Klopp is already with Alexis McAllister. We'll talk about Lavia to Liverpool in a second. Uh, you have to think that that will get done. I don't know if you would agree on that. Manchester United go in last night against Real Madrid. Jude Bellingham in the ranks of Real Madrid and scores. What about United? Because many, I can see this as you're talking to me at the moment, live in Talk Sport. I'm looking at messages, half a dozen in front of me now. Four out of the last half dozen, Man United fans, what news have you got? So what news do you have? Well, the big news at the moment is obviously surrounding Rasmus Hoyland. We broke it last night that Manchester United in advanced talks with Antalanta. I think they've still got to agree a fee. They're looking to pay about £50 million. He will be the number nine that Eric Ten Hag wants. Then the focus will turn to midfield. Bit of a domino effect here. Galatasaray stepping up their interest in Fred. We know he's got offers from Saudi Arabia. He was on Fulham's radar at one stage as well, but I think he fancies the move to Turkey to go and play alongside Wilfred Zaha and play in the Champions League. If they can get £20 million for him, that's the asking price. They will then use that to bid for Sofi and Amrabat, the Moroccan midfielder, did so well for them at the World Cup. Uh, he, he's at Fiorentina. And I think then you would look at the window, Anana, an upgrade on David De Gea. He was really impressive with his distribution in the friendly last night. Mason Mount improves the midfield. They've got that number nine in Hoyland. If that gets done, they were lacking last season. And I think Amrabat is an improvement on Fred as well. I think that would be a good window for Manchester United. OK, overnight, Mauricio Pochettino. Now, of course, at Chelsea. Interesting noises coming out of him. What we cannot have is a massive squad not to be involved. Then it's going to create a mess. Maybe less is more. More is less. It's not mathematic. He says, we need 22, 23, 24 players with some younger ones in it. And that's it. Any news in Chelsea? Well, <laughs> Moises Caicedo obviously is, is their top target. But at the moment, it doesn't look as if Chelsea are willing to pay the price. Maybe they're trying to test Tony Bloom. They bid £70 million, which we understand at Talk Sport is some £30 million below the £100 million that Brighton want. If they think that Tony Bloom is going to buckle on that between now and the end of the transfer window, I can't see it. Obviously, Caicedo, I think mainly badly advised by his agent, almost tried to force his way out to Arsenal in January. Didn't happen. So unless in, in Brighton get what they want, I, I think there's every chance that Moises Caicedo starts the season as a, a Brighton player. And then where do Chelsea go from there? I know there's a fear at Liverpool, which is why they're trying to get this Lavia deal done, that may be led by Joe Shields, one of the recruitment team there. They might try and rival Liverpool for Lavia. But that midfield is so crucial for Chelsea at the moment. You've got Enzo Fernandez, you've got Chuck Wameka, you've got Conor Gallagher, who we know has got suitors. They look really light in that midfield area. So I think they need some players in. I think Pochettino's a great appointment, but at the moment, I don't think he's got the tools to get Chelsea back to where they want to be. OK. Um, uh, on Con Conor Gallagher, Pochettino was speaking about him as well. He says, at the moment, nothing to say. Conor is in our plans. You've got to think he stays. Yeah, and I spoke to someone close to Conor earlier this week about the interest from West Ham and from Tottenham, and he said Conor's relaxed. He's enjoying his football. He's getting minutes under his belt during pre-season. He likes working with Pochettino. Uh, obviously, he's come through the academy at Chelsea, so I don't think he's in any massive hurry to leave. And you mentioned uh, Lavia and Liverpool. This is going to happen, isn't it? I think so. Um, I'm still trying to get confirmation of whether that second bid from Liverpool, which we knew yesterday was imminent, has actually gone in. It will be nearer the £50 million that Southampton want. Lavia is open to the move, and that would complete the midfield rebound, wouldn't it? It's going to be a whole new uh, rebuild, rather, a whole new midfield for Liverpool. And I think in Lavia that they are getting a player with a potential to go and be really top quality right at the top end of the Premier League. And even this early, I think if you're a Real Madrid fan, you realise what they've Oof, got in Bellingham. What a player. Outstanding overnight yeah. uh, against Manchester. Playing like a false nine. And, and it, can, it can do anything. And some players wilt, don't they? When they go to a big club, they pull on that famous white jersey. He looks like he was born to play for Real Madrid. And I think it's going to be brilliant for him. It's going to be brilliant for them. It's going to be brilliant for England. I'll tell you what, if they do get Mbappe between now and the end of the transfer window, <laughs> oh. they're going to take some stopping in terms of the Champions League next they will. season. Jim White and Simon Jordan. 
Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.